Hi everybody, welcome to Livewire Review. Today we've got a battle of siblings, if you will. On my left here, we've got the 2023 Nissan Aria, and on my right, we have the 2023 Nissan Leaf. Well, what sets them apart? What makes them unique? And I mean, what do they share? Well, let's dive into it right now. So Nissan has two offerings in this EV space. Over here, you have the Leaf, which relatively speaking, since its initial inception has not changed all that much. Size-wise, looks-wise, et cetera, obviously some updates, some refresh, some more modern technology from the original versions, but we haven't muddied the waters too hard. So what really sets these two apart is mostly just stature. I mean, you could see the Aria is a little bit longer, it's a little bit taller, a little bit wider, but I mean, besides that, what do we really share here? Well, over here on the Leaf, the upgraded or long range battery pack is the 63 kilowatt hour battery pack, whereas the standard battery pack on the Aria is the 63 kilowatt hour battery pack. So presumably they're sharing a lot of the same components under the sheet metal, but let's talk about that a little bit more in depth in a moment. Right now, let's just focus on styling. It is sleek, it's compact, it's tight, it's exactly what you want in a small vehicle. So over here with the Aria, you obviously get the newest and best that Nissan has when it comes to their EV products. So like I mentioned before, the 63 kilowatt hour battery pack was the standard or the regular range battery pack on this one with the upgraded being the 87 kilowatt hour. So they're definitely making leaps and that's the biggest battery pack that Nissan currently offers in an EV platform. And this car had a couple of interesting things. We have reviewed this one before. You go check that one out on the channel. But one of the coolest things I liked about this and I'll show it to you right here under the hood, they've really squashed the front end and i like that because i think they've given you more room back here and i appreciate that not to say the leaf's tight at all but it has that standard old school long nose feel to it and like an engine cover and all that fun stuff and i think you lose a little bit of that comfort inside for that styling not to say it's a bad thing but you know personal preference i'll take a you know squash nose pug looking vehicle to give myself a little bit more room inside now that's about all I have to say on this one. I'm gonna to toss this over to Jeremy to go over some of the numbers here for you and really talk about what sets these two apart. So we're gonna talk about the Leaf battery first. The Leaf battery is air-cooled. This works perfectly in most situations, but if you have to go on a trip that's long enough that you have to charge a couple of times, you're gonna find that DC fast charging is a little bit more difficult. That's because with an air-cooled battery, you can only DC fast charge it once. Then it gets really hot and it takes a long time to get that heat out of the battery. So when you go to the second time to go DC fast charge, you're gonna find that it charges very slowly. So road tripping in this car might be difficult. Now for the Aria, the Aria has a liquid cooled battery. This is much better technology. It's what everybody else is running. And the advantage that gives you is when you go to a DC fast charging station, not only does it cool it with the liquid, it also cools it with the air conditioner. It'll use an air conditioner, liquid to air conditioner system in order to keep it cool. And this one works really well. The Nissan engineers have set this up so that it can pull 130 kilowatts continuous up until really high charge states. Okay, the Nissan Leaf is a normal family sedan. You're not gonna win many races with it. You're gonna find 147 horsepower in here and 236 pound feet of torque. It's only running a 110 kilowatt motor, but it is enough to get the job done. You don't need to go fast. And over here in the Nissan area, you have 214 horsepower, 221 pound-feet of torque, and 178 kilowatt motor. I'm just gonna take a moment now and talk about heat pumps. It's kind of a boring subject, but it, it is relevant in the electric vehicle world. These cars are about mid-level when it comes to heat pumps. You're gonna find an air-to-air -air heat pump in both of these cars, which is good down to around minus 10 degrees Celsius. So your range is not gonna take a hit down to around minus 10. When it goes below minus 10, it's gonna blend in a resistive heater, so your range is gonna drop significantly when you reach that point. When you compare this to the older Ionic, it was an air-cooled car, it used a heat pump, but it drew from the liquid cooling system. So you could still get your same range when you're down to say minus 20, which is really good here in Canada. But you're gonna find that most cars only have a resistive heater and they use around 7,000 watts to run. So you can lose as much as 40% of your range just in your normal winter temperatures. But not with these two cars, down to minus 10, you should, you should still get most of your range. I'm here in the back seat of the Nissan Leaf. You're gonna see it's a little bit tight for someone of my height. I'm six foot one inches tall, just reference. Uh, my knees are hitting the back of the seat when it's set to my position, and my head is just hitting the roof in this car. 
I've had a little bit more room when I had a Mazda 3 hatchback. This one isn't quite as high. Still, it is a good seating position here in the side. You're not going to be able to sit in the middle, though, because of this hump right here. I'm in the back seat of the Aria now. We did cover this in our other review video, but just to review, there is lots of headroom in the back, lots of room for my legs. We got a flat floor all the way across, so every seat should be comfortable. And we have rear heated seats, so, so it's really nice back here. So here in the back seat of the Aria, uh, across the back seat, we actually do have three lower latch positions for three kid seats. You can see this is my forward facing kid seat installed passenger side. And we've got a second one here that we can install drivers just to kind of show you. Oops, clamp, clamp, and clamp. Okay, so. Now I've loosely installed it. I haven't done the top tether. Don't crucify me, internet. This is just for demonstration purposes. No child will sit in this seat. So one's forward facing, one forward facing. Check this out. There is absolutely no way you're gonna get a third kid in this space. Even if I kind of get even if I kind of get it in there, they have to be the skinniest kid ever or just non-existent. So three lower latches, two feasibly could work maybe three boosters once they get a little older but for the time being two is about max for this back seat so we're here in the back seat of the leaf now and again we've done the one forward facing seat this is on the driver's side now and before we jump into this i just wanted to point something out we just kind of discovered or actually more accurately jeremy's kids discovered there's a button back here that says rear seat heat so the leaf does have a rear seat heater but it only has a high and a low and we're assuming that means the whole bench because there seems to be no differentiation between left and right but it does have heated seats similar to the aria so one seat's in second seat is now in like that and like that okay so same as in the Aria, three lower latch positions, but also same as in the Aria, <laughs> there is not a chance in heck that you're getting a third kid in there unless they sit vertically, I suppose. Um, so same thing, nice back seat, latches, positions, everything that you need. However, ideally this is a two kid back seat, just the same as the new product. So let's talk about the back ends on these two cars. Well, over here on the Leaf, you're gonna get the package tray that is directly connected to our hatch. And interesting comparison to the Aria, there's no floor in this one. There's no nothing to lift. You just get that instant deep well all the way down to your carpet. Um, I like that. I like that there's not a lot of stuff in the way. And again, kudos Nissan for setting you up with the home charging system right off the bat with the adapter for the wall. I just, it's such a simple, elegant system. I don't know why everybody hasn't just jumped in on that yet. Um, by the numbers, I'm gonna throw them up on the screen right here so you can compare the two. Um, this is smaller. I'm just telling you by my eye, the leaf is smaller. I do, again, objectively like that I've got that depth, but over here on the Aria, if you just wanna follow me along, yeah, we've got more space back here for sure. We also have that package tray. We have a single light on the leaf where we have the dual LEDs over here. The cool thing is though, if you're willing to disassemble this back end, it has the first stage, again, with that handy dandy home charging system, 240 or 120. But after you get through the first level, there's a second level and there's more storage. And then there's a foam level and there's more storage. So you can go as deep as you want back here. You can hide as many goodies as you like. But again, Aria is gonna be bigger. Leaf's gonna be a little smaller. It just lends to the size of the vehicles. They're both gonna be handy though. There's a lot of trunk space. You can get a lot of groceries in there. So that's it for this one, guys. Um, I think at the end of the day, you really have to break down what is most important to you. I know in my circumstance, I look at these two vehicles and I say to myself, the Nissan Leaf is $11,000 less than that Aria over there. And at that price point, I think I can live with only being able to fast charge it once, the Chadmo connector that hopefully won't go obsolete you know, anytime soon, but it will eventually. But that's all right, I can live with that. Again, it's 11 grand cheaper. For me, it's that. That's a big move over not losing too much space or functionality. What do you think? Whereas for me, I really like that this one can charge 130 kilowatts. It has a CCS connector. It's bigger, it has better headlights. I just love how it rides. Honestly, my money goes on the Aria. All right, all right, differing opinions, never a bad thing. 
Um, at the end of the day though, what do you guys think? Go below, let us know what you think of either of these cars. If you want to know anything else about them, let us know. We do have access to these, you know, for at least the time being until they're sold. So don't wait too long. But, uh, and speaking of that, if you want to see them, give, a, give us a call at Bourgeois Midland Nissan. We have both of these on the lot. You can come see them, drive them, feel them, and for yourself and figure out whether you like them or not. And uh, yeah, what else? Yeah, just let us know what you want to know about EVs when we do a shoot. That way we can answer your questions. Thanks for watching. Thank you.